John Napier. Astronomy became a thing in the 1600s. Now, astronomy, for those who don't know, deals with celestial objects, space, and the physical universe. So it involves large distances. To get this size happening, you needed to do a lot of multiplications. And these multiplications involved large numbers. This is because they were literally dealing with astronomical numbers. Why didn't they use calculators? Honey, this was the 1600s. Calculators and computers were not invented yet. So John Napier, over the period of 20 years, wrestled with this problem and came up with a solution. He compiled a table of logarithms. He devised a table of logarithms that would allow you to do complicated multiplications by, wait for it, adding. You simply added log values together and that would give you the answer for the, multiplicated, for the multiplication. He introduced the idea in 1614. What you would have to do is first work out what the logarithm of a number is, and then you would add the values together. So how this worked was if you wanted to multiply two numbers together, so large numbers, when it's simple numbers, it's not a quicker way to do it. But if you have ginormous numbers that you have to multiply together, then it, it, it is much easier to just find the log of that huge number and the, uh, the log of the other number that you wish to multiply together. And then by adding them together and referring to the log tables, you would be able to work out what the result of a multiplication would have been. So in this way, you're, you're able to do multiplication by doing additions if you know the logs of the values. Now, deriving the log of a number is not that simple. So John Napier did the valuable hard work for us, for scientists at the time. He worked alongside with another person who was interested in log values and who had come to the idea of using logs to also get multiplication tasks done much simpler. His name is Joost Berger. So he worked with him and they were able to compile the logs of the numbers between 1 to 100,000. Other scientists were also involved at this point, but it took a long period and finally it was done. The tables were published so that anyone looking to do complicated calculations could do it by first determining what the log of the values that you wish to multiply together were. Then by adding the logs together, you would obtain a log value, which you would then which would then tell you what the multiplied value is would be. But now we have calculators, so logs, huh? What is it good for? Absolutely plenty. In mathematics, logarithms is the process used to find exponents. Example, what's the power of three that gives 243? The answer is four. And this is derived by multiplying three by three, by three, by three. So the logarithm of 243 to base three is four. A common base that you will encounter is log to the base 10. So for example, log base two of 100 equals two. This is written as log 100 equals two. Log 1,000 equals three. Log 10,000 equals four. Log 100,000 equals five. Now these logs to base 10 were contributed by another person who was thinking of the problem. His name was Briggs. Briggs is another astronomer. Briggs also made a critical contribution to the usefulness of logarithms by suggesting that logarithm base 10 should equal one. The application of this concept was that any non-zero number raised to the power of zero should be one. So log 10 of zero equals one. Today, logarithm scales are useful when dealing with very small numbers or very large numbers. Let me give you an example. So the pH of water is designated as seven. What is the seven actually referring to? The actual concentration is 0.0000001. 
if we write the concentration like this, you can appreciate that not only would it be very annoying to write that down each time, it also doesn't have intuitive meaning for us. So a logarithmic scale is actually applied to pH so that log 10 of 0.0000001 becomes 7. So it's the negative log that's taken. See how logarithms are useful if you're dealing with really small numbers? Let's give an example with large numbers. So when measuring earthquakes, the Richter scale is used. Yes, but the Richter scale is not a linear scale. It's not a one, two, three, four, five scale. The magnitude of earthquakes can differ so greatly that it is more meaningful to use a logarithmic scale for comparison. An earthquake of six magnitude and an earthquake of a seven magnitude on the Richter scale is in reality not just a one times difference it's actually a 10 times difference the spacing on a guitar is actually also not on a linear scale but a logarithmic scale the loudness of sound which is measured in decibels is likewise on a log scale rather than a linear scale it's also very handy when you're comparing values of very different magnitudes and you wish to plot them on the same graph side by side for example the brightness of the sun is measured to have it's measured on the scale of lumens per meter squared the sun has 100,000 the brightness of it is 100,000 lumen per meter squared now let's compare that to the brightest star we can see at night Sirius this Sirius has a brightness of 0.00005 lumens per meter squared. We had to plot this, these values on the same scale. You can appreciate 0.00005 comparing to 100,000 lumens. You would not actually be able to appreciate the values on the same plot if you could indeed plot it on the same plot. So instead, if we use a logarithmic scale and do log base 10 of 100,000, we get five. Log base 10 of 0 0.00005 gives us negative 4.3. Now, negative 4.3 and five are much easier to plot on the same scale and more manageable for us to digest. Finally, what are logarithms good for? This is an insight I got when I was researching for this video that really blew my mind. So let's look at a linear scale. So you're going from one to two to three to four to five to six, you know, just linearly. And at each point from one to two, you're adding a unit. Two to three, you're adding a unit. Plus one, plus one, plus one onwards. But if you actually have a look at what you're doing from one point to the next, your scale is actually not consistent from one point to the next. So from one to two, I have a 100% increase because I had one and I went to two. I've doubled. But when I go from two to three, if two is where I'm starting from and I've gone to three, I haven't performed a 100% increase, increase in this instance. From two to three, I've only added one unit and so if we compare to the previous it's only a 50% increase likewise when I'm at three and I'm going to four if at my starting point is three then by going to four it's only a 33% increase so if you have a look your linear scale is actually the proportionality proportionality is not maintained as you go along take a look at your log scale though on the log scale, regardless of what base your log is, from one value, one point along the scale to the next, you're maintaining proportionality. So this is very important. So there you have it. This is the uses of logarithmic scales. It's used widely in science. You're gonna encounter it where certain measurements, you know, drug concentrations, for instance. So watch out for it. And next time someone uses the logarithm around you, you're not gonna be as overwhelmed or lost in what exactly why we're switching to this big word scale. All right. God bless you. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.